Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have Alex Yehorov on the podcast. I hope I didn't butcher his last name too much. It's Y-E-H-O-R-O-V. And we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting, nutrition, weight loss, a healthy lifestyle, and also about keto. So Alex, welcome. Oh, hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, Chantal. I'm really, really happy to be here with you today. And I hope we can add some value to your audience and have some fun down the road. Let's see. So tell me a little bit. I know that you've had about nine years of weight loss and body transformation, and you've learned all about intermittent fasting, keto, nutrition, and weight loss. And so I want you to kind of tell me like the biggest tips that you've learned and kind of what are some of the pitfalls that you have found in, in helping people? So when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to weight loss, uh, over the last eight, nine years, you were right. I've been experiencing a lot of downside and a lot of struggles with gaining weight and losing it back like millions of times. I'm not exaggerating so many times. And I wasn't like overweight big time. Uh, uh, so it's like it was 35 pounds or something, but it's stuck in my belly fat. I didn't feel comfortable with that. Uh, you know, different people has different uh, emotions attached to that. So uh, I felt uncomfortable and very, very inconvenient. So I decided to lose it and actually stick to that, keep it consistent. We probably know that a lot of the people, they're losing weight. And after that, we most of the time, we're getting it back. So when it comes with me, uh, over the night, uh, last years, I've learned the main things is to the probably focus is obviously intermittent fasting, working out, cardio, um, uh, low carb diet, and healthy nutrition. It's all good stuff. But when it comes to the weight loss and keep it long term um, off, I I found for myself that instead of focusing on the losing weight on the scales, which we all want, I got it. And instead of focusing on this weight loss pounds each and every week, I start shifting my focus to the health component of it. And this is where the biggest game changer happened with me personally, because what I noticed, if it's not only the body look, if I really want to get longevity, like health, uh, energy level increase and things like that. So when I start shifting my focus on those goals, and while, of course, doing intermediate fast, of course, healthy nutrition, that's a part of it. All I'm just saying, when you shift your focus from waking yourself every day on scales and focusing on getting healthy, getting energy, uh, then you might notice that uh, as a bonus, as a result, you will be losing weight and uh, will be able to way better maintain it off long term because you're going to build the life. Uh, what's that? You want to build the lifestyle and not just the dieting. In fact, I don't really like the word dieting, even though I've done bulletproof diet, hello diet, intermediate fasting, which is not actually the diet, but the time restrictive thing. I've done keto and multiple diets uh, before, but I don't really like the word diet. It even sounds like you're dying or something like that, you know. I like mostly a lifestyle. And when you find, uh, regardless of what you're doing right now, guys, uh, who are tuning into uh, this episode, you might be doing different diets. You might be not doing even intermediate fasting. I don't know uh, what you're doing, but I do recommend you stick into those and find what really works and resonates with you so you can stop dieting and actually take it as a lifelong approach. So that's what will make you happy. And that's what gonna, that was actually made the biggest difference for me and for the uh, my clients and the people I worked with and even my parents and friends. Yeah. So what does a typical day look like for you as far as your okay. eating goes? As far as we're talking about not businesses, we're talking about the foods and things like that, right? Obviously. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's depending, depending. Am I doing some fat fasting? Some Am I doing standard intermediate fasting or I'm doing like 23 hours fast? Depending on that. But if you will ask me for the last six months or so, I start doing alternative fasting instead of everyday fasting. I mm -hmm. made this shift actually already almost one year ago. So I've been fasting for about five to six years and I've been doing it every day, every day. And then I kind of start learning and diving even more into this whole thing and start finding uh, results where people getting better results with uh, alternate fasting. So let's say today, actually I do the fasting. Uh, I did already, I broke my fast at 3 p.m. currently, my time zone. But anyway, so- uh, And where do you live? Day, 
I'm currently located in Ukraine. Uh, I was born in, in Soviet Union uh, and we're Russian family, which is my parents. We've been immigrated to Ukraine and that Soviet Union collapsed. So that's basically where we, uh, I've been growing up and uh, currently located in. So my general day would be starting like that. I would wake up about 7 a.m. I would go, would, would go through my day, meditation, whatever you have, business deals and whatnot. And then I would break out. Of course, I would do most of the time working out uh, and cardio on a fast state or at least in an empty stomach. So if it's fasting day, again, I will repeat one more time, like today, I would do workout, then I would break my fast or I would fast a bit more, depends on the goal, if it's weight loss or muscle building, it's a bit different things, different topic, not going to dive into that. But after that, I kind of break my fast around 3 p.m. with uh, bone broth and lean chicken or shrimp, some kind of lean protein uh, to help digestion and uh, things like that. And then I would have my main meal. That's usually 23 hours fast. Now, 16 hours fast, a bit different would be, uh, obviously. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, that's how it would be going my day, normal day. A few times a week, I do 23 hours uh, fast. Sometimes I do 16 hours fast, even though I can go push further, uh, further but I purposely uh, changing things around. I'm playing around. Sometimes I skip in breakfast and have dinner or pre-bed even. Sometimes I skip both and just have in the middle of the day. So I always play with my routine, with intermediate fasting, with nutrition as well to find what works the best for me based on uh, science uh, and based on my own experience. So that's usually how it goes. So I love that you're saying that because I do think when you see the results is when you just mix it up a bit. So talk about what you do on a 23, let's say you do a 23 hour fast. What does that look like? And what are some things that you do to keep your mind occupied so that you can easily do the full 23 hour fast? Okay. So, so first of all, as I told you already, I've been fasting for quite a while. And at that point, at that moment of my life, I don't suffer. I don't fast. When you go 23 hours fast, I don't think about food at all. So I don't need to keep my mind occupied with anything, to be honest, because I just I just go about my day. Like, oh, okay, it's time to eat. I already forgot about it. You know what I'm saying? So this is where I've trained myself. Although when I first started with intermediate fasting, I start, uh, that's what I recommend with my clients or with the people, general people who are trying to start with intermediate fasting, I, tr I try to teach them to start slowly and see based on their feelings uh, so they can go slowly and adjust, even starting from 12 hours fast. I know it's not a technical fast, but still abstaining from food for 12 hours and then 13, 14 and feel as you go. Uh, What's your feeling? Because you need to be a little bit in stress and not too much. If you will push yourself too much, again, it's not going to be for everybody. I will make it clear. But if you will push yourself too much or if you will diet, you might just have the problem that I actually have gone through, which is binge eating food disorders, multiple uh, multiple food disorders, and after that would be very hard for you uh, to get back with that and fix those emotional eatings and whatnot. So for me right now, 23 hours going really easily. I just go about my day. I record YouTube channels. I record podcasts. I go for a walk, for a run. I do work out. My brain isn't thinking about much about the food. Of course, there is different days could be and different uh, hormonal response like leptin and grilling them. Hunger hormones might trick me, right? Uh, but generally speaking, I don't even think about food as I go through the day. And I only drink basically green tea or black uh, coffee, um, obviously without sugar, without anything added to that, plain black coffee or just water. That's it. There is no secrets. As you keep on practicing, I think it gets easy. At least that's what's happening with me and with the people that I talked with. Uh, but we're all different. So for somebody they can just jump and do right away 48 fast hours fast and feel incredible. It wasn't for me. I was pushing too much. And a couple of years ago, and I was doing like prolonged fasting for 48 hours, 72 hours. And it, it, it broke me big time because of them. At that point, the coach didn't actually, the coach that I hired didn't walk me through this process slowly. He said, okay, now 72 hours. So I put in my mind, in my willpower, like, no, I'm going to do it. And you know what? I didn't do it. 
I broke, it was 69 hours. So instead of breaking the fast in the right way, I start binging. This is where I start creating this mentality of fasting and then binging and then fasting and binging. Uh, and so I've learned that dieting, it's very dangerous tool and you need to, that's why exactly I said when we just start uh, this call, I said that make the lifetime and not the short-term dieting. Don't do those two weeks crazy diets or something. You need to uh, su- find something sustainable for yourself and slowly you can increase. If we're talking about intermittent fasting, definitely increase it um, and find your time, your schedule for that, which will be better and more adaptable based on your work, based on your feeling uh, with your kids at home, you know, with your lifestyle. Yeah. Let's go right into our listener questions. We have one, I'm going to ask both of these at the same time. And one is from Marissa from East Tawas, Michigan. She says, does drinking flavored herbal teas like peach break a fast or flavored black coffee like hazelnut break your fast? And two, I heard you talk about your supplements and wonder what brand of probiotics you take. I heard you say it's great to have 150 billion, but I didn't catch the name. Thanks so much. And I'm really enjoying your podcast. And the second one is from Kim from Buffalo, Michigan, or sorry, Buffalo, Minnesota. What is MN? Minnesota, I think Buffalo, Minnesota. I have a- Don't ask me. (laughs) I know, I know. Asking the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do well in geography. Yeah. It's coming back to haunt me. I have a question about drinking an, <laughs> <laughs> drinking an elixir during my fasted state. I have read that an elixir, four ounces of hot water with ginger, cinnamon, honey, lemon juice, cayenne pepper dissolved together has many health benefits as well as boosting your metabolism. I've noticed great results doing this in the AM and PM. My question is, do the spices or honey and lemon juice kick me out of the fasted state enough that I should consider stopping this? So I guess it sums up into... All right, so... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's into one question. That's why, yeah, yeah, I think that's really, really nice tight into one question. So I think I will start answering this question with the... Uh, interesting point of view of that because uh, a lot of us know that even if you absorb one calories of doesn't matter what it technically break your fast and we've talked um, and uh, people uh, have many debate on this regard and i'm sure that one calorie of doesn't matter what that uh, is is it uh, uh, even to be honest uh, coffee black plain coffee has a couple of calories to begin with but we have apple cider vinegar uh, has a couple of calories we have obviously honey obviously every like cinnamon and every spices has some calories in but it depends what you're taking in and what you're going to gain from it. Because some of those spices, like or even apple cider vinegar, it's not spice, obviously, but uh, they actually trigger some of the hormonal response and some of the uh, things in our body that actually makes us to burn more fat and go deeper into the autophagy, into the ketosis, deeper into the fasting, right? So it all comes down to what's your goal. Because for me per- personally, I know that black plain coffee technically, again, has some calories, but I know it's going to give me more benefits down the road and put me more into fasted state. So uh, I'm going for the black plain coffee. In terms of apple cider vinegar, answer would be the same. Uh, it technically break a fast, but uh, it gives me more benefits. Same with lemon juice. If you don't drink like a liter of it, right? If you uh, drink a little bit of that, that will give you more benefits during the fasting. Same with the uh, other things that person mentioned before, which is like cinnamon and ginger. Of course, ginger has pretty, to be honest, ginger has a lot of carbs into that. You probably know that. So technically it will kick you out of the ketosis, but the side effect, Oh, sorry, ketosis uh, from the fast, uh, but uh, but if you use a little bit of it, mm, it's definitely way to go. In terms of the honey, it's the only one thing that in I can just say that I would avoid, obviously, because I've been doing a lot of low carb diets and keto and not keto and tell and, and intermediate fasting, of course. But I would not go with 
uh, honey because it has tons and tons of fructose. And I would just stay with the cinnamon, with the ginger, with the apple cider vinegar, green teas. And let me answer right away the second question, which was uh, about the peach inside of it, like fruits. Those teas uh, with those uh, fruits inside, with like berries, I generally speaking don't drink. I would rather go with a plain, just green tea. Uh, or even black one, but without fruits, because yes, this one also has calories in, it will break, it will break your intermediate fast and will break your fast, but at the same time, not going to give you much of the benefits. I'm talking about like peach uh, flavoring or depends again, what's the flavor and is it real peach or is this some artificial? Artificial, I stay away completely, uh, even if it's not spiking insulin, even if it's not doing anything, I, I stay away from artificial, any sweeterness, anything like that and colorings. But if it's peach in the tea, if it's some kind of uh, flavor coming from the fruits, that I would stay also away from it because it's not going to give me much of the benefits, but it will break fast at the same time. Um, yeah. Hey guys, I'm so excited. My new book, One Meal and a Tasting is out now. And if you order the book on Amazon, just the regular paperback edition, if you go in and make a review, you will get the audio book for free. Send a copy of your receipt to questions at chantelrayway.com and you'll get the audio book right away. Yeah, I I agree with everything that you just said. And I think that, you know, a cup of coffee, uh, you know, has between four and five calories for a black cup of coffee. Uh, Apple cider vinegar has about three calories. And like you said, the one tablespoon of honey has 64 calories plus a lot of sugar. So I think it goes back to the cup of black coffee, I would go for that. The cup of, you know, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, if you love it and you you want to take it, go ahead and take that. It really, you know, makes that much of a difference. And the one thing that I think people, you know, really go back and forth on is cream in their coffee. And so I want to address that. So I will tell you what I personally do. Now, one of the things I've done is I've interviewed over a thousand women who've been thin, who've never been on a diet. And I will say this, as I've interviewed them, a lot of them have coffee with cream in the morning, but they put a little splash of cream and they put no sugar and they don't count that as they're eating. And so as I've interviewed all these women, it's like, this is what they do. They still stay thin, that little bit of cream. And again, they're putting a very little splash of cream in their coffee and they're still staying thin. And they're, it's not for them. They're they're It, it obviously is breaking a fast, right? Because if you're putting yeah. those calories in, you are breaking a fast, but for them, it's not affecting their weight loss. And so I think that it's got to be something that you do individually, that you have to make that decision of what you is important to you. And is, is it, are you losing weight? Yes or no? Like, and, and I feel like sometimes people get so caught up in like, you know, okay, this has hazelnut. Should I have it? Or this has peach. Well, I also don't want people to get so obsessive compulsive about it that they go, oh my gosh, I can't have that. I can't have that. If it's working for you, then go ahead and do it if that's not affecting you. But at the same time, I agree with you. I do everything I possibly can to stay away from anything that's artificially flavored. Like it doesn't, for me, it doesn't benefit me. I know I don't feel great doing it. And you will train your body to, like I have green tea that's, that is, Un, unsweetened, unflavored, anything like that. And I also do do a hibiscus tea and I have a continuous blood glucose monitor and I look on it and I see my glucose go up at all when I drink this. It's a hibiscus tea and green tea. It doesn't change at all. Like it literally, my blood sugar stays as stable as can be. So I know that it's not affecting me. And to be honest, when I have caffeine, when I have 
the the green tea keeps me very, very stable. But when I do have a cup of coffee, even with no cream in it, it actually does raise my blood sugar a little bit, just that black sh- black coffee. So, so getting a continuous blood glucose monitor, I have a great episode with a girl who, who just did it a couple episodes back. So if you haven't listened to that, that would be a good one to listen to. But I definitely think, you know, not getting too, too obsessive, like with, with Kim, with that elixir that she made, I would, I would see how maybe doing that in your eating window. So like, let's say your eating window is 12 and six. If you think that is really benefiting you and you're feeling great results, go ahead and do that at 12 o'clock. And one other tip that I do for myself personally is I have green tea until say about 12 or one o'clock, but then I don't love black coffee. I'll have it in the morning sometimes, but I like to have one or two cups of coffee sometimes in a day. And I actually prefer it with cream. So, but I do that a little bit of cream, but I do it when I start my eating window. So let's say at 12 o'clock, I'll have one cup of coffee and that's when I start my eating window. Then it gives me another hour or two to extend it a little bit later, if that makes sense. So it allows me to fast a little bit longer. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Chantel. And you uh, you said really, really well in terms of the, the not stressed out because we are most of us human beings, we are very perfectionist. And, you know, when we're trying to get this the best, the best from everything and stick to every, every route out there from every YouTube channel and everything like that and make it ideal, we actually stress, put us in a position where we're stressing out even more. And when it comes to stress, we probably know that uh, when you stress out, you turn on your autonomic nervous system and you're starting operating from the uh, sympathetic ner- nervous system instead of the parasympathetic nervous system. And what's happening is you release your uh, adrenaline uh, gland, release adre- adrenaline and release cortisol and things like that. So your blood sugar actually increases. So you basically breaking your fast by stressing out. So sometimes, in fact, almost all the time, it's better to go easier with different rules, so-called, and things like that, and play and see what works for you. And again, you said for many, many women that you interviewed, they said that sometimes most of them having this a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of cream in their coffee in the morning, and they don't count as a meal, obviously, and it works for them. And I can say that, okay, it has 50 uh, calories, let's say, in this uh, thing. And yes, it's totally break your fast, but you're not going to get overweight uh, most of the time if you're going to just consume this, have this one coffee in the morning once in a while with this 50 grams of creamer. So go and do it. Go ahead and just find the, what works for you and what makes you and ha- happy and get your results. And obviously, which makes you happy at the same time. This is the key from no matter what dieting you follow, no matter what pattern of eating. uh, I do believe that good healthy nutrition and intermediate fasting are really, really key. But to sum those things up, then definitely it's supposed to be in a balance with your right mindset. So if you do something, you need to enjoy the process, like really enjoy the process. And in this case, it's going to get easier to do your dieting or whatever you do so if you want to have this black coffee in the morning with a little bit of creamer no it will break your fast but don't stress it too much because you're not most in most cases you're not going to get overweight so uh, yeah Mm, awesome well this next question comes from william mita and it's in Wilson Park, Arkansas. She says, I have a friend who lost a lot of weight over 30 pounds. And all she did was do a 48 hour eating, 48 hour fasting, 48 hour, not fasting, 48 hour fasting, 48 hour, not fasting. Then another friend that did the same thing with just 24 hours on 24 hours off. I want to know more about alternate day fasting. What are some tips? I've also heard of some people where they're doing 500 calories during that eating window on the days that they're quote consider fasting. I've also heard of the 5-2 diet. Can you talk about that a little bit more and explain it? All right, that's really really good question and 
To begin with, I want to say that I've been experimenting with most of those intermediate fasting diet patterns and methods and everything that you mentioned right now in the uh, this question. And what I want to say before I even start to explain is, I generally speaking don't recommend anybody to cut your calories too much. Uh, when you go and cut them too much for the extended period of time, like uh, I think those people are talking right now, alternate day fast and then two days off, two days on, two days off, and they do for 48 hours fast and then 48 hours eating. I think it's a bit too much. Again, it might work for somebody. We have so many different people and so many variables, but I generally speaking would not recommend to go that deep for 48 hours uh, fasting and then 48 hours eating, I think it's too much. And um, we, what uh, if we're talking about 24 eating, 24 fasting, that's a bit better in my case. It's more smoother. Uh, long-term, we're talking about long-term effect, right? If you're talking about one week or two, I think you'll get great benefits, weight loss benefits and whatnot, health benefits. But if we're talking about long-term, like 10, 20 years, then I would recommend to alternate it go easier do 16 hours and then you eat the next day then the next day go 23 hours then eat the next day then again 16 23 something like that and from time to time boom do 72 or 48 hours once in a month for example or play with the fat fasting which i by the way just tested just tested like five days ago i finished my first time in my life i tested the fat fasting and what it does is actually is when i consume for five days 1,000 calories worth of only fat. So it's no protein, no carbs at all. So I basically ate uh, coconut oil uh, and I ate olive oil. I mean, to, uh, eight tablespoon of it during the day. So I'm not going to dive too deep into that. But what I'm saying is, yes, it's good. This shortened amount for five days, I've done it. 1,000 calories is good. And then I get back to my normal routine where I alternate and do like that. But if you cut it long term, you would fast for 48 hours and then the next 48 hours you eat, you might get in the problem, obviously, with the uh, your metabolic rate and your metabolism will slow down and things like that. I don't think long term it's good for health, but we are, again, we are all different. I, what I've noticed in my experience in my own weight loss journey and all the people that I talk with, we're all really different. And so many things that you said, this coffee spikes a little bit of uh, glucose, uh, sugar, blood sugar in your in your thermometer or what, what you're using, right? Your glucose meter, uh, Chantel. And for me, it might be not be the same, right? For all the people, even water can, <laughs> I probably exaggerate, and even water can spike that uh, insulin. Uh, I'm exaggerating. That's so what I'm saying. We're all different. And at the end of the day, uh, it will work for different people differently. But from my experience and from the people who I've talked to, I would not recommend to do those fasting uh, for a long time. So if, uh, another question was from the same question is 500 calories a day. That's good. When you fast in a few times a week and you go for 500 calories a day, that's okay. But if you do it every day, 500 calories a day, I don't think you're going to get good any good results, right? Because losing weight is not the most important thing in life. I think in it's all of this balance of be healthy, to have the energy, to look good, of course, is one of the part of it. But you're probably not going to feel good if you're going to cut your calories that much. But again, just to sum things up, we're all different if you do it and it really works for you and you feel great and your analysis, blood test and everything shows great results, then you shouldn't listen to me or even Chantal, you shouldn't listen to anybody if you feel really, really good with that. Uh, so that's what I found for myself, generally speaking. Yeah, so there is a diet out there. And again, both of us are on the same page. We are not big on diets, but it's a it's an alternate diet, it's an alternate day fasting, and it's called the five two diet. And what oh, it yeah. means is out of the seven days, for two of the days, you eat five hundred yeah. calories for women and six hundred for men. So for example, Sunday you'd eat five hundred calories, Monday and Tuesday you'd eat healthy, Wednesday you'd eat five hundred calories, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday you'd eat healthy. And so again, for me, if I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna fat like I'm going to fast for that day. So I'm going to do a full 23 hour fast and 24 hour fast or something like that. Or maybe I'll do a 48 hour fast. I've done three day fast. So, um, 
I'm a fan of fasting all the way. I do want to hear a little bit more about the fat fasting because I think that that is really unique and I want to hear more about your experience. Could you share that with yeah. us? Uh, okay, so it's been quite a while since I've been practicing more than 72 hours. I kind of stopped doing uh prolonged fasting to be honest but i still wanted to get those benefits of the uh, prolonged fasting i'm talking about autophagy uh, i'm talking about mental clarity and things like that right uh, i'm not a lot whatever i do i'm mostly focusing on the health part of the whatever i do uh, but as a bonus yes i keep my weight off i'm building muscle i'm losing weight all of that good stuff but so what i was doing with fat fasting it's definitely going to help you guys to lose weight, but I, it wasn't my main goal to begin with. So why I was doing fat fasting and why it's worth working so well is because simply, first of all, fat doesn't spike your insulin that much as it carb would do or protein. And second thing, when we do uh, absorb on the high quality good fats uh, and about one and a half or 1,000 calories a day, our body technically thinks that we're still technically into fasting. We still kind of fasting. Now, not in uh, our different organs, different parts of the body, they go into autophagy, into fasting state in different time, to be honest. So uh, what I was doing with this fat fasting is I was trying to still eating food, still eating calories coming from only fats, high quality fats, while maintaining partially my autophagy and getting more uh, like longevity and all of this recycling benefits, health benefits, right? So, and my experiment showed that, well, even though I did absorb those calories, I still felt physically weak. Uh, because generally speaking, when I do prolonged fasting, I don't feel as good as when I do 23 hours, as I told you before. 23 hours for me is like not fasting anymore. It's just like, wow, awesome. Everything is great. I just do things and don't even focus. But when I do prolonged fasting, there is a downside. That's why I did fat fasting. But what I noticed, I still, I felt way better. I could fall asleep and all of that way easier on the fat, which is bonus. Uh, but I still felt physically weak. Uh, I didn't have that much energy. I didn't want to do workout. Uh, I didn't want to do cardio. And I kind of was more laying down in the bed, sort of, uh, sort of speak from the uh, physical point. Uh, mentally, I felt okay, a little bit down also. But in general, I, I did it for uh, three, three days. And uh, in a couple of days, I want to try to go and push, in a couple of weeks, sorry, uh, try to go and push to four days as it's supposed to be, maybe even five days. So see, I slowly trying to adapt my body. I don't go right away for 10 days or something. I'm trying to adapt. I try two, three days. I feel okay. Okay, next time I will push a little bit further. Um, but that's what was my experience. And to be honest, I, I started also sharing it uh, on my channel and uh I want to people try and also get more feedback from the people who experienced that. So in this case, I will have more data and the science, uh, different research supports the benefits, obviously the health benefits and the uh, weight loss benefits of doing so. But again, it's supposed to be periodically. It's not every day. It's maybe four days, uh, once in a two months, in a one month, in three months, like periodically. In this case, uh, those things will work really, really well, I believe. So I want to ask you about muscle building for a little okay. bit and kind of changing things up. So I'll tell you my experience today. I went to the gym this morning with a trainer and I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm, I always work out in a fasted state. Always. I can't even work out within a fed state. I just can't do it. I've trained my body so much to work on fasted state. I can't. But he worked me out so hard today. I mean, I literally was having trouble walking out of the gym. I mean, it was leg day. And I mean, he just put me through the ringer. And I got home and I normally don't eat until sometimes one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, depending on kind of my schedule for the day. But at nine o'clock this morning, I was like, I'm having a protein shake. I'm just going to change my eating window today. So I want to kind of talk to have you 
talk a little bit about that, about listening to your body and how you change things up when you're working out that extreme hard. Like, I mean, when I tell you I burned through every glycogen I had today, I was like, I mean, it was probably one of the hardest workouts I've, I've done in a long time. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, very, very good question. I want to share my mindset around this thing related to the workouts and related to not even workouts, your uh, your your brain, your uh, just schedule in general, because it all comes to the same. Uh, I have the, this philosophy where you do need to listen to your body. And uh, regardless of how you feel, uh, you need to operate differently. And I will explain what I mean. So in terms of workouts, I do periodization is called. That means if I feel today uh, that I didn't get enough sleep and I feel a bit weak, let's say, or a little bit sick and I still want to do workout, then I will go and do workout, uh, but I will not push to the very edge. I will not push to the very end. I will give my body a little bit more recovery. So, uh, but the next day, if I feel great, if I feel enormous amount of energy, I would go and I will really kill like as much as I can. Same uh, applies not only for the physical activities, but I believe for the work. Uh, for example, if I'm not in the mood uh, to record YouTube video, or it can, can be anything uh, in that regards. Sometimes it, uh, I try to do not stress out too much. I try to push, push, push. And if I see something not working, I try to uh, close my uh, close my eyes and actually kind of meditate on it and ask myself important questions. Do I really feel like to do that? Is it laziness? And the very important part of those questions is, is it, listen, is it my body lazy right now? And I'm looking for the urge and looking, talking to this old mindset, or is it I, my body really needs rest, for example? If it needs rest, I can lay down on the couch the whole day if it really needs a rest. But this the distinction is really, really key here because you might get sick and really feel like you need rest, or you might you might feel just lazy and like you don't want to go do things, but it might be just like an addiction, uh, food addiction, watch addiction, movies, whatever. So same with the work, working out. If I feel great, uh, I will give my body big stress. Uh, but uh, sometimes I, I, I shift things around. Sometimes I... I not always work 100% intensity. Sometimes, as I said, I give my body rest, the same as the brain uh, or mindset, I give rest. And in this case, I know I can perform on the long run. Life is a long run, right? We try to push all the time and be perfectionism in everything right now, this very second, but it's not always like that. Sometimes you just wake up and you're not in the mood to do anything. And you try and you push and you meditate. And you know what? Nothing works. You're like, you know what? It's okay. We'll sit and watch comedies and not stressing out about that. And then you went through this day and then the next day, boom, you have tons of motivation, tons of energy back. So life goes like waves. It's like a roller coaster. Um, everything I think in life, to be honest, is like waves. It's not always you feel that great uh, physically or mentally. So I try to listen my body. I try to listen my mind. And I try to really understand is it really need a uh, rest or is just trying to fake it and just trying to be lazy because those are huge two difference. That's great advice. And I think that, <clears throat> yeah, so for me, I felt like since I did such heavy lifting today that I just felt like my body needed to have that protein after my workout and having a little bit of carbs with the, you know, I put a little bit of spinach and fruit and stuff like that in my protein smoothie. Um, so that, because I worked so hard, my body was so depleted. I felt like in order for me to kind of build that muscle back up, I needed to do it. Yeah. So yeah. listening to your body's important. Well, this has been amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Okay, so there is a few ways, but one of the bestest way to uh, find me is obviously is to uh, go if people, if somebody want to work with me one on one on their weight loss journey or muscle building or just getting health in general, then uh, the best way is to just book a free strategy call with me and see if uh, there is a good fit. And uh, the link for that would be it's a calendly.com slash Alex Yegor, which is basically C A L E N D L Y dot C O M slash and then my name and my surname, which is A. L E X Y E H O R O V. So if you go to this calendly.com. Uh, and we can put Alex it Yeager. in the show notes. We can put it oh, in yeah, the show notes. Can, yeah, please, Chantal, put it in the show notes. It would be, we'll make 
much easier. And so this is the best way how people can contact with me. But again, I understand it's not for everybody. And so the other ways uh, to contact with me, it would be uh, to other ones. It's a podcast that I host and the YouTube channel. They have exactly the same name, name which is uh, Alex Yegorov, which I already said to you how to pronounce my name, right? So Alex Yegorov, Keto and Intermediate Fasting Lifestyle. If you type it anywhere, you will probably find something either YouTube or podcast. And Again, in, in my social medias, I don't really talk only about intermediate fasting or only about keto. I'm more into nutrition and fasting and weight loss and health and a little bit of muscle building and longevity and a bit of mindset and everything in between like that. So yeah, that, those would be the best places to find me. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.